Hi, it's Charles again, and today I'll be reviewing The Fires of Medway. Um, it's a great game. It's, it's a card-based game, but there's a lot of little tiny maps that are involved with it. It takes quite a bit of room to play and uh, get set up. Uh, the different areas of the boards. Initially, we have the Search and Destroy area, where we choose two and flip one. I'm sorry, keep one, and the other one gets flipped down, and the, the uh, Japanese player does the same thing. And that's how we build our, our battle cards. That's how we build a maneuver map. And uh, that's basically the beginning. So I'll choose two, empty ocean, escort spotted. So I'll keep these hidden from the Japanese player, turn empty ocean back down that I don't want it. We're looking at the left hand side here, and the times two means I draw two battle cards. So I leave that one face up, and I do my two battle cards. Now the Japanese player will do his two. He draws low clouds, he'll put one of the low clouds back leave one of them face up, and he'll place low clouds on a maneuver map. Now, what low clouds does is adds one to movement um, to the maneuver map. So the red points are the entry for the Japanese player, the stars are the entry points for the American player, and as you move closer together, you have to count the distance between you to count fuel, fuel card checks. So each plane, <coughs> each plane has an inherent gas value. Um, this one is only allowed two fuel, so it can make it from here to here, uh, and it has to pass a check using the sort and destroy deck. Um, and you'll notice on the right hand side there's gas cans, and these count against you. Um, losing time or headwinds will count negative gas cans against you, so if you draw any gas cans during your check, um, that could hurt you too. So we'll go over a little bit about that in a second. Alright, so each player goes back and forth. And then after the third times three enemy card is drawn, uh, the search and destroy deck becomes sort of like a fuel check deck. Uh, and using that right hand side of the card that we talked about. That goes to the staging mat here. Okay. So now that we've draw on the cards and built our hands. Uh, we have one player is the confident player and one player is the desperate player. If both players are tied for VP, both players are desperate. But the confident player is the one who's ahead in victory points and his hand is a maximum size of seven. If he goes to desperate, he goes to a maximum size of nine. Right now the American player is ahead at two, the Japanese player is at one and is the desperate player. Um, now we do initiative. Okay. So on the back of these cards show you what uh, you can do with the repair points and things like that. We'll come back to that in a second. We have uh, four initiative cards. Uh, one, two, three, four. And we, those are dealt randomly. And so they're flipped over. And the confident player can steal one of the cards from uh, the desperate player. So I'm going to take my four and swap it with this three and set it up like that. So now um, I will go first, he will go second, I'll go third, he'll go fourth. In the scenario notes, each aircraft carrier has its own assigned airplanes. There's a bulkhead track marker, tracks for damage, and as the ship is damaged, it's flipped over and it's the more track, more uh, damage is tracked on the backhand side. The defensive dice are built into here. Uh, you also know some bullets are extra here. Um, as it gets reduced or it gets down to crippled, the opponent can get one VP when it's crippled. 2VP, 1 suck. And there's certain uh, events for this one. May re-roll explosion tests. Okay, so same thing goes for both sides. They both have their own types of planes. Some are fighters, some are bombers, some are torpedo bombers. Um, and each aircraft carrier also has a cap slot. A cap slot is a, a defensive plane, which is set in a position to uh, defend the plane from incoming airplane attacks. 
they don't automatically start there, but one of the things you can draw in the Search and Destroy is a cap card, which lets you ready that. And there's also a couple actions in the game which lets you do that. Uh, quickly going through the cards, this card would let you draw one battle card. Empty Ocean is nothing, it's like a blank. Low Clouds lets you place clouds on the map. Uh, times three enemy lets you draw three battle cards, and that's one of the three that you're looking for to um, end the search and destroy phase. Um, enemy fleet, empty ocean, low clouds. Uh, empty ocean, empty ocean, low clouds. No caps. Okay, so ready caps. So that means you can place a plane to the side here, place a fighter to the side in a defensive position, and just setting it right there means it's on the cap side. Now. This aircraft carrier is only allowed one cap. Some aircrafts are allowed two. Uh, this one's allowed one. And uh, the last thing I, that could be in the search and destroy deck is a squall. Now, a squall prevents planes from uh, launching off the ship. And we'll set that there just for fun. Okay, so now the uh, players set up their chits that represent um, their units. So you'll notice that the A plus one is the same as the A here and all the airplanes have A on them. So that's a group together represented by this icon on the chart. We'll put that there. And then we have the B unit here which is represented by B. Um, then we have all the cards marked by B. And then B plus one meaning hidden. When it's discovered it flips over to two or the other side. And uh, those are on the board, and we'll do the same thing for the Japanese. They have A, B, C. And that is it for the, uh, the setup of the maneuver map. As these units move closer together, the distance between them will be used for fuel checks. So counting the distance from right here to here, it's one, two, plus one for hidden. Once it's discovered it flips over and uh, the distance is two then instead of three. Uh, going through the clouds will count as one, two, three, four, plus one for hidden is five, so that's a distance of five. So when the planes go to do an attack, we'll send a wild can on over. So this, we'll go ahead and do an attack. So. Um, we have the initiative card. Now there's three things you can do with the initiative card. Enter the wind, which allows you to launch up to three planes. Battle stations, which allows you to launch two planes and do two repair points to your aircraft carrier. Or five is draw two battle cards and do five points of repair. And the repair comes in handy if your ship is damaged but you can't get in any defensive position. So let's find a way. Okay, so we're going to send a wildcat over. A torpedo bomber. And another wildcat. So the first thing that happens is, is we're coming from the B marker here. And we are attacking B. So the shortest path is we'll attack A. Okay, so that's one, two, and three. So we draw two search and destroy cards, and we count the number of gas cans that are on the uh, the cards. There's only one, so that counts against us. So uh, we roll a check to see if we pass the fuel rating of the cards. So looking at the cards, we see this one requires three, this one requires two, and this one requires two. Now each plane also has its standard side and it's damaged or smoking side. So um, if I did not pass the gas check here, I would flip this over to its damaged side and continue my attack. Makes it much tougher for that plane to get home. It can get home, but uh, it's a little tougher. So the first thing that happens is that plane, the aircraft carrier's uh, CAP or com command uh, combat air patrol is launched and ready to fight these guys. So these guys do a dogfight and they fight air to air. So these cards that um, there's different types of cards that you can draw 
and cards like this are pilot cards. Now, as you can see, there's like a little pilot thing here. Um, there's bullets on here which add to damage. We've got dice that add on to the damage on the attack. There's uh, a couple other things that can happen. You add extra dice. Um, if you have a cross here, that means the other opponent's battle card is canceled. Um, there's your bluff card. It shouldn't be in the deck. And the uh, Resolute Defense, which means you get to draw two more battle cards, you get an extra dice, and you get an extra damage. And that's that goes back and forth. You uh, roll your dice, and the winner of that dice gets to do a damage roll. <coughs> so he'll roll three dice, I'll roll four dice, and um, I can't remember who wins a tie. But as that progresses forward, you get past the dogfight. Now you go into the carrier battle. You battle against the carrier. The carrier has a built-in in inherent defense of two battle dice. You also play battle cards. Now those battle cards look a little differently. Uh, those have a blue border around them. And uh, that adds to that attack. So the uh, battleship and the airplane resolve their um, bomber strikes, their torpedo strikes and the damages uh, are either afflicted to either side so the winner of that battle inflicts damage on either the aircraft carrier or the bomber that's incoming and uh, once that's resolved it goes into a phase where the carriers or the airplanes return back home you've got to pass a couple tests to get back home and they can come back smoking on their flip side they could land on the aircraft carrier and, and cause a fire there's an explosion test where it, or not explosion test but a a landing test where if it lands it can cause a fire to break out um, on your aircraft carrier. A couple of these, two of these turns into an inferno. Uh, damage markers against the um, carrier can cause leaks to happen on it. It can also cause floods to happen. So as you get more and more damage to this, this bulkhead marker is going to move further down. And once it gets down to three, your opponent will get one VP. Um, And that's pretty much it. So the game is really interesting because that was just turn one. And then now uh, there's the uh, Admiral phase. And then uh, the Admiral phase lets you use the inherent value of the card. So looking at the back of the Admiral phase, it lets me draw up to my hand in uh, combat cards. I can land any of my cap or scramble fighter, one fighter to an empty cap slot, which lets me get one of these other guys prepared. Um, I can use three repair points to do some repair. And then there's the uh, end phase, which we sort of already talked about a little bit. Um, and then the victory retreat is checked. Then we go to number two. This unit will do the exact same thing, attacking whoever he wants. B will happen, and then A from over here will happen. Um, it's a really good game. There's lots of cards to it. Um, I was a little confused at first, but it's, it's real easy once you figure out that the A on the end uh, and the blue being the American, the uh, white means undamaged, the blue, the red means damaged, uh, just because there's clouds in this one and the clouds are in this one too, but there's more smoke on the plane here. Uh, but once I figured out the A matches the A and matches the A, I was like, oh, okay, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, it takes a lot of room to play, uh, but I like it. It's a dice fest, lots of dice rolling going back and forth. Um, and just because you beat somebody in a battle doesn't mean you're going to do damage too. So there's uh, sometimes it's tough to get through the defense. You get all the way through it, and then uh, you end up doing not any damage, not doing any damage. Uh, but it's a great game. I hope you get to a chance to play this one. And um, I think that's about all I can say about. It. Have a good day.